Hello and welcome back to the Simon Says Minigame tutorial for Empire Part 6 and let's just jump straight back into it, shall we? So in the last video we finished creating this function that checks if the user has pressed on the correct button and in this one we're going to continue by creating the game over screen that the user is going to be sent to if they press on the wrong button. So for that we're going to scroll back down and we can create this screen just above the Simon Says screen. So we're going to create a few empty lines just above here. And then we're going to say screen game over. And this screen is going to have the same background image as the other screens. So we're going to say image and then background dot PNG. And then we have to resize it. So we're going to say at half size. And then we're going to create a frame with a transparent black background color that is going to separate this background image from the menu that we're going to put inside of here. So for that, we're going to create a new line and then say frame and then background and then hash symbol and then six zeros and then 80 to make this have 50% opacity. And then we're going to make this stretch over the entire screen. So we're going to say X fill true and Y fill true. And then we'll go ahead and create a second frame that is going to hold the actual game over menu. So we're going to say frame and this frame is going to be inside of the other frame. And the background image we're going to use for this frame is going to be an image displayable instead of using the background property. So for that, we're going to set the background property to none. So we're going to say background none, like so. And then we're going to give this frame a size. So we're going to say x, y size. And this is going to use a calculation that is based on the size of the background image. So for that, we're going to say int and then 1548, which is the width of the image. And then we're going to divide this by two to make sure that it has the correct size according to our project. And then we'll add a comma after these two round brackets, like so. And then we'll say int again. And this time we're going to say 948 divided by two, which is the height. And then we'll go ahead and align this frame on the screen. So we're going to say align and then 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 to make this align in the center. And now we're going to add the image that is going to be the background image. So we're going to say image. And this is going to be the background image that we have inside of our UI folder in the images folder. So for that, we're going to say UI slash menu background game over dot PNG like so. And then we'll resize this. So we're going to say at half size. Next, we're going to add a piece of text that is going to tell the user that they got the wrong button. So for that, we're going to say text. And then we can say something like, darn, you got the wrong button, dot, dot, dot. And then let's do a new line. So we're going to add a slash and then N like so. And then try again, question mark. And then we'll set a size for this text. So we're going to say, size and then 30 and then the color is going to be white so we're going to say color hash symbol and six f characters and then we can also add an outline to this text to make it look a little bit nicer so for that we're going to say outlines and then two square brackets and then instead of those we're going to add two round brackets and then we're going to say absolute Two to make a two pixel wide outline and then a comma after that and add the color which is going to be black so we're going to add hash and then six zeros and the next two values that comes after that is going to determine the amount of offset that we want for the outlines on the x and the y axis but we don't really want any for this so we're just going to say zero and then zero like so and then we're going to go ahead and align this text on the screen. So we're going to say align. 
and this is going to be at 0 0.5 and 0 0.45 and then we'll make the text center aligned instead of left aligned so we're going to say text align and then 0 0.5 like so then next we're going to add the try again button so we're going to say image button and this one only has an idle image so we're going to say idle and then we're going to say ui slash try again button dot png and the action for this image button is going to do two things first it's going to hide this game over screen and then it's going to show the saml says menu so for that we're going to add a list of actions by adding two square brackets and then we're going to say hide game over like so and then a comma after that and then we're going to say show Simon says menu. And then we'll go ahead and add the anchor property to the image button to make sure that the origin point is going to be in the center instead of in the left corner. So for that, we're going to say anchor and then 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And then we'll position the image button on the screen. So we're going to say align. And this is going to be at 0 0.3 and 0 0.8. And then we'll resize it to be half of its original size. So we're going to say at half size. And the last thing we're going to add to the screen is going to be a quit button so that the user can choose to quit instead of trying again if they want to. So for that, we're going to say image button and idle. And the path to this image is going to be ui slash quit button dot png. And the action for this image button is going to be dependent on your specific game. So in this case, I'm just going to add a null action. So we're going to say action, null action. But you will of course add an action that is going to be appropriate for your specific game. And then we'll go ahead and adjust the anchor point for this one as well. So we're going to say anchor 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And then we'll align this button on the screen. So we're going to say align and this is going to be at 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 and the last thing is to resize the button so we're going to say at half size and i just realized that i forgot to add the action property for this other image button so i'm just going to go ahead and do that now so now we can actually go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see what this looks like so now let's go ahead and test the game by pressing on the play button. And as we could see there, the right button just lit up, which means that that is the correct button to press. So we are instead going to press one of the wrong buttons, such as this blue button. And since we got the wrong button, the game over screen showed up that says, oops, darn, you got the wrong button, try again. So let's go ahead and press the try again button. And here we go back to the SamoSets menu, which is also exactly what we want. So now let's go back to the code and continue. Now the very last thing we're going to add for this tutorial series is going to be a reset function that is going to make sure that all of the relevant variables are going to reset back to their initial values, as well as generate a new button pattern for the user to follow. So for that, we're going to go back up into the init Python block. And then underneath this last function right here, we're going to create a few lines. And then go inwards twice in the indentations. And then we're going to say def reset Simon says. And as I mentioned before, instead of this function, we're going to be resetting a bunch of the variables that we created earlier on. And to do that, we're going to need to make them into globals first so that we can change the values. And the first one we're going to make into a global is going to be the current button index variable. So we're going to say global current button index and selected button index too. So global selected button index. And then we're going to need the input ready variable as well as correct fix. And the current button pattern one as well.
and we're also going to need all of the different bottom lid variables as well so we're going to say global red button lit and then blue button lit green button lit and yellow button lit like so so now we're going to continue and reset all of these variables back to their initial values so we can start with the current button index variable and this one should be equal to zero as the initial value and then the selected button index as well like so and then we'll do the correct fix variable and then input ready should be equal to false and then we'll reset the button lit variables as well so red button lit is equal to false and then blue button lit and green button lit and then yellow button lit so now that we have reset all of these variables we are going to continue and create a new button pattern for the user to follow so for that we're going to say current button pattern is equal to and then we're going to use the create button pattern function that we created earlier on that creates a button pattern for us so we're going to say create button pattern and then we need to pass in one parameter that is the difficulty that the user has picked so for that we're going to say type is equal to current difficulty so now that we have reset everything and created a new button pattern we just need to make sure that we are restarting the interaction to make sure that these changes are going to take place inside of the game so we're going to create a new line and then say vampire dot restart interaction like so now there's actually one more variable we have to add to this function that i forgot and that is the user picks variable so for that we're going to go ahead and duplicate this correct picks line right here and then we're just going to rename it to user picks and then right here as well we're going to duplicate this line and then set the user picks variable to zero like so so now we want to make sure that this function is going to run every time the sum of screen is going to be shown to make sure that the game can start over so for that we're going to go back down into the sum of screen right here and just above the background image we're going to go ahead and create a new line and then we're going to add an on displayable that's going to have an action run every time the screen is going to be shown so for that we're going to say on and then in two quotation marks we're going to say show and then action function reset simon says the last thing we're going to do is going to be down in the start label so we're going to go back down to the start label right here and here we have these three variables that we have called button pattern easy medium and hard and these three variables are actually a little bit redundant for our game because we only really need one variable and that is this current button pattern one because inside of our reset function we are directly supplying this variable with the list that we get in return from this create button pattern function and as such we don't really need any other variables as they just add extra clutter to our code so let's go ahead and remove these three lines like so and then instead of assigning the current button pattern variable the button pattern easy value we can remove this and just add an empty list because then as i said before instead of our reset function we are then assigning this current button pattern list with the list that we get in return from the create button pattern function so if we go up again to the reset function we can see here that we have set the current button pattern to be equal to the create button pattern function which returns the correct button pattern list and as this function is going to be run every time we show the samus screen the variable is going to contain the correct button pattern list from the start so with that said let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see what this looks like so now let's go ahead and test the game but on the medium difficulty this time and we're going to try to get the entire pattern correct
And as we can see, that worked as intended as we go back to the Simon Says screen, which means that we got all of the correct buttons. Now let's try again with a different difficulty. So we can go back to easy, for example. And that also worked as intended. Now let's try to get a button wrong and then play again. So we're going to press this try again button and then play. And this also seems to be working correctly. So now we have actually finished this minigame script completely as well as the tutorial series. So you could go ahead and use this minigame now in your visual novels if you want to. And for those of you who are patrons of mine in the supporter tier or higher, can go ahead and download this script in the relevant post. And if you like this series, please consider to press the like button and leave a comment down below to let me know. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.